greetings to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, all protocol observed. Um, all acknowledgments to all our visitors and special guests. And uh, I thank God for our teachers who are also present, or rather my teachers who are present. Um, I'm here for an assignment. I have been asked to share on the subject of righteousness. Righteousness. Amen. Um, it is an interesting subject, and um, I have no intention to exhaust all of it, but by God's grace, I may just be able to touch on a few things that I feel are more pertinent, and uh, we can always continue to study as... Um, Christians, we must learn to just be Bible students. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to share uh, on a message that I have entitled The School of Righteousness. The School of Righteousness. I'll take my Bible reading from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. I will read from my King James Version. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. May God bless the reading of his word. This is a very common scripture. I'm sure many of us have heard this scripture so many times. It used to bless me, even when I was the youngest of Christians. And uh, I just used to love that part when the preacher says, It is the power of God unto salvation. And it used to really bless me. But um, I want to thank God that as we got in the year of revelation, I've come to learn something very important about apostles. Uh, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, he says, firstly, apostles. So I've come to learn that um, apostles are the highest order of Christ in the church. And so when, when God gives them a vision or a theme for the year, when it's declared, it's released. Whether you take it or you partake of it, it's another issue. But if the apostle declares it, in the world of the spirit, it is released. And so, while we are in the year of revelation, knowing our inheritance in God, I've come to realize that the inheritance and the revelation is already in the realm of the spirit. It's just somebody's action to start moving towards the revelation that has already been released in the year. And so as I read this scripture, I, I got this understanding that came so deep. The Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. The reason why he's saying I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he's speaking to people of different classes. He's never met this church personally, physically. But he's writing to them an epistle that he wants to teach them the doctrine of Christ in its summation. And so he says, I am not ashamed of this gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. In it is a reason for somebody to be ashamed. Because the savior that they preach died a, a sinful death. The Savior, who they claim to be their king, died naked. The Savior, whom they claim to be the main man, grew up in a carpenter's house. And so Paul says, while there is reason for me to be ashamed of the Savior that we preach, I am not ashamed of this gospel. I am not ashamed of this good news. How can I be ashamed? Because when I believed, he took me 
out of the world. I don't know your background, but I was a drug addict. Listen, I used to smoke, we used to call it weed. We used to smoke weed every single day of the, of the year. I would sleep in nightclubs, that's me. I was a chain smoker of Madison. I tried stopping Madison in my own willpower and it didn't work. Now, the day that I gave my life to Jesus, I remember it so vividly. I had grown up in this church and I, I, I had all kinds of sermons preached to me. But I had an accident one day when I was drunk at a Thomas Mafumo show. And as I was sitting on the ground and the car is smashed, God visited me and he showed me the prodigal son. And when I saw the prodigal son, I saw how I had strayed away from my father. And right there and then I made a prayer. And I said, Father, I'm coming back home. I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. When I said, Father, I'm coming home. The following day I stopped smoking. I didn't need a rehabilitation training. I didn't need anybody to give me seven steps to, uh, to possess your willpower. Seven steps to get to this. The power of God to save me from addiction came into play. So Paul says, I am not ashamed of this good news. What is this good news? Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that Christ died for your sins. According to the scriptures. He didn't die the way he wanted to die. He had to die the way it was prophesied. When Peter tried to rescue him. He said listen Peter. I can call 12 legions of angels. To come and rescue me right now. But what's happening. Is that prophecy has got to be fulfilled. According to the scriptures. I have got to die. According to the scriptures, I've got to be persecuted. According to the scriptures, I have got to be ashamed. According to the scriptures, I've got to be stripped naked. According to the scriptures, I've got to die a murderous death. According to the scriptures, I must die a shameful death. So Paul says, I preach to you this good news that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Oh, I don't know if you feel the way I feel, but I feel there is a hunger for good news. There is too much condemnation. Somebody tell me some good news. Somebody tell me there is hope. Somebody preach to me good news. Somebody tell me that I can be healed. Somebody tell me I can get over my weakness. Somebody tell me that there is power in Jesus. There is a hunger for the word. A hunger for the good news. So Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this good news. Not that there is power in the good news, no. But the good news itself is the power. Ah! Listen. The rebuke is not the power to change me. The good news is the power of God to save me from a problem. Paul says, if you are fighting with sickness, listen to the good news. If you hear that Jesus died for your sins, Jesus was buried for your sins, Jesus rose for your sins, there is something about good news that starts off by making you feel good. Be, 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 before you get over anything, just hearing good news makes you feel good. If you give me good news, I will start thinking good. Don't tell me about hell. Hell is bad. Tell me about heaven. Tell me about what Jesus did. 
I will feel good. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't like feeling bad. I want to feel good. And if Jesus died to make me feel good, give me some good news, brother. Give me some good news. I'm sick and tired. Is, I'm sick and tired already as it is because you've already told me I'm bad. Give me some good news, man. Tell me something good about this Jesus, man. He couldn't have died all he died for, for me to feel bad and condemned. Whoa. Oh. Ah. Oh, you need to pray for me, man. I can get too carried away about this, man. I need to feel good about what he did. Hmm. So Paul says, in this good news now, ha, huh, it's not just the power of God, but in this good news, the righteousness of God is revealed. Ma, 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 ma. Amen, man, man. Tell me, tell me. Tell me, listen, listen. I have been told of a certain righteousness that I have to work for. I don't want to work for this one. Jesus brought it on a silver plate. It's mine as a gift. I don't have to work for this man. It's the status that I earned. I didn't work for it. He had to die for me to get it for free. If I come with a diamond ring and give it to you as a gift, to you it's free, but for me I paid. To you it's free, but for me I paid. Jesus was made unto us the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God. For us it's free, for him he paid. For you it's free, but for him he paid. I have a tendency of drinking some water. So Paul says, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. Ha! How? I ask myself this question. How is the righteousness of God revealed in good news? And this is how I came to learn of it. The way the righteousness of God is revealed in the simple good news is that God, as pure and as holy as he is, he had to find a way to make a sinner who did nothing justified without him compromising his integrity. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you got that one. I don't know if you got that one. If Sky News would have been there at the time, God didn't want the scandal on the news that the holy God is now going around walking with Tafazwa and yet Tafazwa was in the nightclub yesterday God had to find a way to bring himself to a reconciliation with a sinner but without him being made dirty by the sinner So he says the only way I can get right with this bugger, the only way I can get right with this addict, the only way I can ever talk to him or give him access to my throne is if I can get somebody who can really meet my standard. Ah, I don't know if somebody's hearing me well, man. And God says, I have got to find somebody who meets the standard. I'm going to ask my father to help me preach in a minute. Because what I'm about to say may challenge some people. But allow me to say this. The righteousness of God is not of works, but of faith. So, so don't tell me to work for righteousness. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. It's a status that I earned. Oh, 
Let, 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 me, let me ask my father to help me preach. If you are here, you need to buy this book. If it's at your house and it's just been sitting, you better start reading it. He says, Romans 10, verse 6 to 11. Uh, from verse 1 to 3, Romans chapter 10. Uh, Brethren, my heart, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God. Uh, this is good to have a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. Uh, I don't know if I'm speaking to some people who got zeal but no knowledge. It's dangerous to have zeal and no knowledge. Because you can start running with something you're not even supposed to run for. Because of zeal. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, not man's. God's righteousness. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Listen to what my father says. <laughs> Uh, now this one, you need to put on your seatbelt. There are two ways of righteousness. The righteousness of your own effort. Trying to save ourselves. And always feeling guilty because we cannot be what we want to be by ourselves. Most Christians live life of feeling guilty because of ignorance of what Jesus did for them on the cross. That's the good news. That Jesus died so that you can be the righteousness of God without you having to work for righteousness. Oh, Baba, help me preach. Baba, help me preach. Listen to what he says. Some Christians, because of wrong doctrines of churches, they torture themselves in pursuit of holiness. Beating themselves until blood comes out. Listen to what he says. What myself and others did not understand was that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 17. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. This one is Jesus and he died for all. And if he died for all, then all died. That those who should live, now that's you and me, those that should live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Ah, hey, 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 hey. Listen to what he says. True righteousness comes by faith in Jesus. But because it is so simple for people to believe, they don't believe it. They want something complicated so they can work for it in order to believe it. The righteousness of God, the true righteousness of God comes when you believe in Jesus. Full stop. What? Be careful. Yeah, I'm being careful. I'm being careful. I just had my father help me preach it. So, so, so what do we do with bad behavior? The problem with bad behavior is bad believing. Paul says it is the power of God to save you from bad behavior if you believe. To everyone who believes, the good news is the actual power of God to save from bad behavior. I'll be honest with you. From the time I learned this, I'm enjoying some very good victories in my flesh. I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying some very good victories in the flesh. Because what I've realized now, listen to what my father says as I close. He says this about bad behavior. He says faith should come first, followed by works. 
If a person believes in Jesus according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, his spirit is completely saved. What remains is the teaching of possessing the land. The war is in the mind. So when you do something wrong, that doesn't make you unrighteous. What remains for you is the teaching of possessing the mind. The righteousness of God is not we get in, we do something wrong, we get out. Muadi, be careful. Muadi, be careful. Romans 5 verse 19. Allow me to just read this quickly as I come to a close. Be careful, Muadi. I'm telling you. You better qualify what you are saying. Romans chapter 5. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. Are we all there? This one, I need us to read it together. If you can read it. Verse 19. Ready, read. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. By the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, help me preach this one. Ah, 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 I'm looking for somebody who I can get you, sir. Come. This man, Romans 5 scroll says he was a sinner because of Adam. Are we still together? 5 scroll says by, by one man's sin, sin entered into the whole world and death through one man. So, if he was a sinner, was he a sinner because of what he did or he was a sinner because of his nature? Praise God. So he is a sinner because of his nature, not because of his behavior. <laughs> That's what you've just told me. So if he does something bad, is he bad because of what he has done or he is bad because of his nature? So now, through the obedience of one man, all those that believed were made righteous by the obedience of one man. So if the obedience of one man can make you righteous. Are you righteous because of what you've done or you are righteous because of your nature? So if you are righteous because of your nature. If you do something wrong, are you unrighteous or you are the righteous that doesn't know what the righteous should do? Okay, okay, okay. Quickly, quickly. When, he, when you were a sinner, if you would do something good, would that justify you and make you righteous? So if you are a child of God and you do something wrong, does that make you unrighteous? Thank you. This is my case. This is my case. This is my case. I'm about to finish. Our father says, once we received the Lord Jesus as our personal savior and believed, you have been saved. You have eternal life. But to enjoy the blessings in this life, you have to overcome things in your life. So overcoming things in my life is not for me to become righteous. Jesus said the kingdom of God has arrived on earth for us to enjoy the kingdom. To enjoy the kingdom, we must fight with what is in our flesh. If you overcome anger, you get blessing. Whatever you overcome, blessings take over. When you overcome adultery and fornication, you get blessing. Salvation and eternal life, we have it already. But we have war in our flesh and our mind. And that's what we must conquer. It does not mean such people will not go to heaven. There you go, there you go. It does not mean that they will not go to heaven. But while on earth, they are hindered from receiving blessings because of what is in the flesh and the mind. So, so, so when the preacher comes and says, don't steal. 
Your not stealing is not making you righteous. Your not stealing is confirming the righteousness that is in your spirit. It is confirming the nature that is in you. So when I don't fornicate, I am not fornicating to work for righteousness. I am not fornicating because that's my identity. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God sleeping. I am the righteousness of God waking up. I am the righteousness of God whether I like it or not. For as long as I received him, I received his righteousness. I've got five minutes now. So, Pastor, how, how, do we, how, how do we work this thing? Pastor, how do we work this thing? We have settled that you are the righteousness of God, whether you like it or not, if you believed. You better start telling yourself who you are. Our Father says, man is spirit. You are a spirit. And you are the righteousness of God. Not by works, but by faith. What you need. Come, Baba. What you need. I've got four minutes. What you need. If I took this man out of a warehouse... He's all dressed in high vis, looking very dirty, smelling bad. Then I tell him, if I'm the owner of a multi billion company, I tell him from today, smile, from today, you are the director of this company. From today. He's going to get a little confused, thinking, uh, uh, what, what, what did, what did, I, did I do something? From today. You are the righteousness of God. That's what Jesus did. When you received him, you had done nothing. But he exchanged with you his righteousness for your sinfulness. And you were justified by faith. So now what Simao needs to do is to constantly and consistently remind himself of who he is. Not what he was. What he was brings sinful consciousness. You are always conscious of sin. Everywhere. Looking for evil appearance. Everywhere. Sin consciousness. Now what he needs is some good training at the school of management. If he comes back, ah, if he comes to work tomorrow, after I have promoted him, and he comes in his high vis, is he the director? Is he dressed like a director? When he starts speaking to managers, he's used to, ah, because he's used to this warehouse talk. When he speaks, is he a director? But is he speaking like a director? So he needs to learn to sit down and say, what do directors do? What do the righteousness of God do? The more, the more he is conscious of the righteousness of God, the more he starts saying, no, 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 man, I, I don't lie. The righteousness of God doesn't lie. This is not what the righteousness of God wears. I wear better than this. I don't wear a safety, uh, safety shoe anymore. Get me a pointed shoe. Where did you learn that I saw? I saw at a, uh, uh, what do they call it? You know, there's places where they train you to be, to et etiquette. Thank you. Thank you. Where they will train you, this is how you must handle yourself. This is how you speak with dignity. When you sit down, you don't sit down with your legs wide open. You sit down and you go like this. That's what the word of God starts teaching you of righteousness. The righteousness of God does not lie. The righteousness of God does not sin. The righteousness of God does not keep grudges. If we will keep the word in our face, it will start to mold our righteousness and our behavior more than keeping the sin before our face. May God bless you. Special and uh, wonderful 
conference 